Welcome to Your Career Story Podcast, a show that's designed for rock star professionals looking for that extra booster shot of confidence in their careers. Whether you're trying to get clarity on a job transition, want some work-life balance inspiration, or need a strategy to snag that promotion or raise, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, ex-Wall Streeter turned startup junkie who now coaches hundreds of clients, empowering them to take back control of the job search and land their dream job. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, and prepare yourself for your weekly boost of career confidence. And welcome to another episode of the Your Career Story podcast. We are here with season two, and we're talking all about work-life balance this season. And I'm so excited to introduce to you my dear, dear friend, Stephanie Mae Wilson, where she is going to be chatting with us all about single versus married. What do you do? What does work-life balance actually look like between those different seasons? So I'm here in her house, and this is so fun. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. (laughs) I'm so excited about this. I love everything that you do. And truly, I I love this conversation. So I'm really glad that we get to have it. Yay. I'm so pumped. Well, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience. Tell us a little bit about who you are. What do you do? So my name is Stephanie Mae Wilson, and I'm an author, a podcaster, and a speaker. And my specialty is helping 20 and 30 something women navigate their most important relationships. So that's their relationship with God, with their friends, with their significant others and with themselves. Um, And I also really do talk about our relationship with our work, which I I love getting to talk about that. And the reason that I, I do this is because I found that And I I bet you've seen this in your own life, that Mm -hmm. when our relationships, when those relationships specifically are in a great place, Mm -hmm. that's when we're able to show up as our best selves in the world and do Mm -hmm. what I feel like God created us to do. Yeah. Um, I think the easier way for me sometimes is to see it in the opposite way, that when those relationships, when we don't feel seen and known and loved in those different relationships, it's impossible for us to show up as our best selves. We start to hide or strive or put up walls or put on masks. We just can't truly show up as the woman where we were created to be and do the things we were created to do. So my hope and my goal in life is just to help us all have just healthy, thriving, joy-filled, loving relationships with God, with our people and with ourselves Mm -hmm. so that we really can show up, show up as our best selves and do the things we were created to do in the world. Yeah. I love that. I think too, the idea of coming to work as a whole person is very much in line with it. That's a very strong thing that I feel. And I talk to my, a lot of my clients about is showing up to work as a whole person. Cause at the end of the day, let's be real. What happens at home affects work and what happens at work affects home. So we need to stop pretending that it's more compartmentalized than it actually is. Yes. Well, and like, that's, I mean, that's exactly it. It's if you're getting ready to give a presentation or if you are getting ready to speak somewhere, or yeah. if you're going into an interview or something like like that and you just were ghosted by someone mm-hmm. that you were texting with that you really liked. Been there. <laughs> you are seriously, you are so distracted. Yeah. You aren't feeling confident. And so that is going to affect yeah. how you perform at work. It just is. We're just yeah. not, and there's no shame in that. It's, yeah. it's just true. It's just how we are. And when we have people in our corner and in our life that love us and believe in us and yeah. support us, we're able to do so much we're just able to show up in a different way. Yeah. Um, you're right. It's not, we cannot, we can compartmentalize it in some ways, yeah. but we really, if we want to be our best self mm-hmm. in one arena, we mm-hmm. also need to be taking care of ourselves in these other arenas as well. Yeah. I think that's so true. I even think about myself and I think back on my career and the times when I was not confident in, in one area, it very much quickly bled over to the other area. So like I was, when I was transitioning from investment banking and I was working to at the New York stock exchange, it took me a year to get my confidence back up in the workplace, which equally took me about a year to start to get confidence in my personal life too. It like was very symbiotic. Is that the right word? Probably something like that. (laughs) Um, and it was, it was very much confidence is a huge, huge thing, but let's talk a little bit about work-life balance and how that kind of we, 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 um, I feel like in today's culture, it's a common concept for women specifically, like yeah. work-life balance. We're always asked, how do you do it? How do you manage it all? Right. Yes. Um, so for you specifically, you have got a lot going on, right? So you're writing, you're, you are, you, you've got a lot of things going on podcasting, um, which I've been on your podcast, which was super, super fun. So good. Um, and so how do you, what does work-life balance mean to you specifically? So I was thinking about this and I think that the the important thing for me when I've been thinking about work-life balance is to remember why I started doing this work in the first place. Mm, the why. Um, the why, exactly. Yes. If we are 
I I think your why really determines what work-life balance looks like for you. So if your goal in life is to make more money, more money, more money, more money, more money forever, that's your biggest goal ever. Well, then like you don't really need as mm-hmm. you don't need a home life. If, right. if you don't, so true. You don't need a home life. So, yeah. so really work-life balance should be resting as much as you need to, so that you can get back to work. So you can keep making more money. Yeah. Um, for me, my big why, you know, I have a why for why I do the work that I do, which I actually just mm-hmm. shared, but the way that I have my business and my work set up, my why is, um, is freedom, Mm -hmm. is location freedom, time freedom, and really financial freedom as well. Because, um, I, so I live in Nashville with you. Um, and, but my family and my friends are scattered all over the country and even all over the world. I have some of my most dear people in Denver where I'm from and my, why the reason that I want to do the work that I do is so that at the drop of a hat, I can go home and be home for a week with my people, whether that's mm-hmm. for a fun reason or whether someone's hurting or having a hard mm-hmm. time. My little sister's getting married in two weeks. Yeah. And oh, I'm going to be that's home. So that fun? That's so fun. So I'm going to be home <laughs> for like 10 days. Yeah. And I want my wife for doing the work that I do yeah. is that I want to be able to travel and I want to yeah. be able to go home and I want to be able to be there for my people. And that is, I mean, that is really the most important thing to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. So therefore that's how I need to structure kind of my work-life balance. And so what I, so I think keeping the why in mind is really important. The thing that, that I've discovered in myself is that work-life balance doesn't, it it doesn't happen for me as much on a daily basis. Yeah, It happens more on like a weekly or a monthly or a quarterly or like even a yearly, not yearly, that's too long, but like, (laughs) like more like weekly or monthly. Well, we were just talking about seasons before we we even started hit record. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So it's like, We'll have, I'll have seasons where I'm super into what I'm doing at work and I'm Mm -hmm. so excited about it and I want to throw myself headlong into it and, or I have, I'm staring down a deadline and I just, it's kind of taking over everything. And Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes that's okay. Yeah. Um, And to have a season where you're like really putting your head down and sort of letting everything else fall by the wayside. But we know that if we let, if we have our whole lives be that way, Mm -hmm. our lives are really empty. We're going to burn out. And Mm -hmm. even if we get to our goal, we're going to have no one to share it with by the time we get there. Totally. So, but then on the flip side is, you know, I'll be working probably really, really hard next week. I probably won't be, you know, investing in my relationships very much, but then the following week I'll be home for 10 days yeah. and I probably won't, won't be working at all. Yeah. So that's kind of how I look at it is in seasons of like talking through it with myself. Is this a season of work or is this yeah. a season of play? Yes. What is the most important thing in this season? And it can't, if there's too much of one, mm-hmm. the other one's going to fall apart. Yep. And vice versa. Yes. And queen of that. Um, yeah. I mean, gosh, I feel like we all are. Um, but so, yeah. So I think, I think of it kind of seasonally. And then I do think of it a little bit in terms of, you know, each day, is this a time for work or is this a time for rest? Yeah. And you know, when I'm, I don't know if this happens to you, but when I'm going to bed at night, like all of a sudden my brain is full of all the things I need to do the next day, yep. or I'm like immediately brainstorming something. And I have to say like, Stephanie, this is a time for rest. Yeah. You can work in, you know, seven hours when you wake up, yeah. this is a time for rest. So really asking yourself, like, is this a time for work or is this a time for rest? Or is this a time for your people? Yeah. Um, but, but like building in time for the things, like, why are you doing this? Yeah. My work doesn't like, if I'm not taking that time, then I'm not really actually achieving my goal. Yeah. You're not achieving your goal. I think that's the, the key to, you know, I've been doing a lot of these podcasts all on this subject, yeah. right. Of work-life balance. And so I'm kind of like in the beginning, you know, you th- I thought to myself, like, what is work-life balance to me? You know, thinking, is it <laughs> going to get a massage? <laughs> is it, is it having right. like lunch for my, you know, taking time out for lunch? Like what does actually work-life balance really look like? And I think what I'm gathering from all of these different conversations is it really comes down to intentionally creating time to rest in whatever capacity makes the most sense for you. So for some people, it means starting your day off with rest. And some people, it means ending your day with rest. And some people, it means like, it could, it could look like seasons. We were just talking about sabbaticals and what that potentially looks like. Or, um, I just came off a season of heavy, heavy work. I was traveling a ton, which I hate doing. (laughs) I was traveling a ton and I was working really crazy hours and I did not have a lot of bandwidth for like, except for like two important relationships in my life to really invest in because work had taken over my life. And so the balance part is what I'm entering into is the more play aspect because you need those seasons to have 
cool things to deposit into your brain. Whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working a nine to five job, you have to have that season to recharge or you are going to burn out and not be helpful to your company or to yourself. Right. And yeah. I think, I think the problem comes like, you know, it is hard to rest. Mm-hmm. It is hard to take time off and it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to take a week where you're like, I'm going to, it's hard to mm-hmm. take a vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, you know, when we, I think it, it, and you would know this way better than me, but there's some stat that like how many vac- paid vacation weeks like don't go unused. Oh, in the US. so many, so many. Like, it's crazy. It's, yeah. And I think that sometimes we're thinking I'm going to hustle just a little bit more. And once I get to this point, I'll rest. Once I get to mm-hmm. this point, I'll rest. It just is never any cycle. Though. It's never any yeah, cycle. We totally. never get to that point. So I think that just like saying I'm not working just for working sake. I'm working so that I can really take care of my family. Therefore in the three weeks of vacation that I'm granted every year, I am going to turn off my laptop and be with the family that I'm working so hard for. Yeah. I was actually talking to my counselor about that yesterday. And she said, I feel like the Lord's entering you into a season of rest to teach you how to rest so that when marriage and babies come along that you can actually go to the park with your kids and not feel guilty about it because guilt comes in with a lot of that. Yep. The feeling of guilt of like actually not turning things off feels really guilty yep. for a person who's like me, who like it's achieve, yes. achieve, achieve. And if probably if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably of a similar mindset. And yep. so the hardest thing actually for people like us, I feel like it's more challenging. We talk a lot about growth and how you personal development and whatnot. A lot of people think growth really looks like reading more books and like just growing yourself and challenging yourself. I think a challenge for people like us who are very full steam ahead is actually to rest. That's the hardest thing for people like us to do. Yep. It's like the the role reversal. I know. Totally. (laughs) And laziness is not our issue. It is striving and straining is our issue. Yep. Yep. And so if we're able to actually take that back seat, I think that would actually create a flourishing of relationships. Totally. And, and really like the why is so important. Like, why are we doing this in Mm -hmm. the first place? Mm -hmm. It's not... I mean, maybe the goal is to just achieve, achieve, achieve your whole life and make as much money as possible. In that case, only rest as much as you need to. But really for most of us, it's, it's, we want something more. Yeah. There's some life aspect. And so when you're taking time off or when you're on sabbatical or when you're doing something, it's like, this is, this is why I'm doing this. And so I get to really be present in this and I get to really soak it in. Yeah. Um, And just being good stewards of the gifts God has given to you. Because if you try to run your gifts ragged, it's like, they're not going to be in the pieces that they were supposed to be in to do the work you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So that's a really key part of it. So Stephanie, I actually took one of Stephanie's courses, which I will promote to the end of this earth. It's called (laughs) Love Your Single Life. Love it. It was so wonderful. So helpful for me. Um, I had been, it's no surprise. A lot of you, if you follow me on Instagram, know that I've been single. I was single for a really, really long time. Like I'm nearing 30 and I had, I think my post for Valentine's day was like, I'm nearing 30 years old and I've never had a Valentine since high school. Like it just had never been a thing for me. And so I talked to a lot of men and women that are single or married and work-life balance really looks different in those different seasons. And so I really wanted to bring you on to, because you're on my relationship guru. I love that. I love it. (laughs) And just bringing some awesome, truthful knowledge, but with practical steps associated with it. So it's a lot of the hard work, but also with practical steps. And so First of all, I just love your work. And oh, anybody that's listening, if you ever struggle with your singleness and you feel like you're single and you're like, I just don't know how I can get out of my own head in this subject, like your site, all the things are so helpful and so wonderful. Um, so thank you for creating it, first of all. But tell us a little bit about your journey and like why this, I mean, you kind of talked about why a little bit, but right. really your your whole journey and your own story around singleness and marriage is very much wrapped into your purpose and why you created your business essentially and your right. platform. So I would love if you could tell us a little bit about your journey yeah. from singleness to marriage and kind of everything in between. Yeah, for sure. So it's funny because um, I think something happens when you do work similar to the work that I do. Mm-hmm. It seems like the second someone gets married, all of a sudden they have like, you know, top 10 marriage te- like tips or yeah. <laughs> want to talk about marriage a bunch. And I've been married for almost five years now. And I rarely talk about marriage because something about the single, like that season when I was single, it was just so impactful in my life. It was such a big turning point in my life that I can't stop talking about it. Yeah. Um, for me, I had, I feel like most people are like, get me out of singleness as fast as possible. And that was me for a long time. I mean, (laughs) truly it's, but, but I think that like, I just, it's amazing to me that I I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. It truly feels like I'm still like the single girl that I was. Yeah. Um, and, and so I had, I feel like and she's, every, she's very married. She's very, I guess I'm, very, I'm very married. Um, but I just, I can never, like, I just feel so tied to, yeah. um, what I was learning in that season. And, and I had such a transformation in that season. Yeah. So I think along, you know, along the way I had, 
I feel like every experience when it comes to Mm. singleness and dating, Mm -hmm. um, I was single forever and was wondering when it was ever going to end. I watched Mm -hmm. all my friends get into relationships without me. I had all kinds of breakups. I had rejection. Oh my gosh. Had my heart just totally broken. I had, um, what I call band-aid boyfriends more than I can tell you where it's like (laughs) sort of a rebound thing. You're like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, just all kinds (laughs) of I call them situationships. They're not quite relationships. They're just situations. And you both like don't really want to talk about like, are we a thing? Are we not a thing? So you just live in limbo land for forever until someone gets hurt. <laughs> that is the best thing ever. I, I, I have a thing I call friend relationships. Yes. Where it's, very like, similar. it's really similar, but they are a little different. I love that situation. Yeah. I mean, I had all kinds of those, all kinds of friend relationships where I'm like in love with my best friend and don't know how he feels. And we sit in that limbo forever. <laughs> um, so, I mean, really these situations were so mm-hmm. um, big in my life. And I think that like relationships just were always so important to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, I think that's the case for a lot of us. I think it's not the case for everybody, but I was just very focused on my love life and very focused on how it was going. And, you know, a lot of my prayer life surround, like, you know, surrounded how I was feeling. And I just feel like I felt every feeling on, on the, um, I ran the gamut when I was single and dating. One of the things that I really remember feeling was just impatient though. Mm -hmm. I I really wanted to meet my person and I, I, it felt like it was taking forever to happen and watching my friends get into relationships made me wonder if there was something wrong with me. If this was ever going to happen to me. So many times too much, not enough all at the same time. All at the same time. How can you possibly be too much and not enough at the same time? But like, I was convinced that I (laughs) was, yes. Um, I just, uh, like the loneliness that sometimes yeah. comes with it, the con- confusion when you like someone and you keep trying to put yourself out there, but it's like not working out. Mm-hmm. Um, how many like bad dates can you go on in a row before you just feel like quitting? Yeah. Um, I've been there recently. All, <laughs> yeah. all the things, but I did have this, this, um, you know, and in all of it, I feel like I was real, I was really trying to trust God. Yeah. And I was really trying to have my hands open. I was really trying to trust his timing for my life. But I think what I was actually doing was white knuckling my life. Oh yeah. Roller coaster ain't it? Totally. Yes. yes. I, that's, that was exactly my <laughs> mental picture is like, I'm on this roller coaster, just like gripping the handrail with yeah. my eyes closed, not enjoying the ride at all. Yeah. And I had this moment, um, I was brushing my teeth which I feel like the best moments either happen when you're brushing your teeth or in the shower, yeah. like the best <laughs> revelations. So I'm brushing my teeth and I realized that I had, that I really had two choices. Mm. I could continue on the way that I was and I could white knuckle my life until maybe I finally met someone. I could mm. try to control every piece of it, but, or I could start to let go. Mm-hmm. I could start to actually open my hands. Yeah. And I, and I started to think about like, what does trusting God actually look like? And this question popped into my head that I actually, you've heard, cause I talk yeah. about it in the course. I started to wonder like, if, if I knew that four years from now, yeah. everything would work out just perfectly and maybe not even like I was hoping it would, but it would be better. Yeah. Um, cause we never, you know, we never know. We how never know. It's, it's yeah. always like this wonderful surprise. And so if if I knew that in four years, things were going to work out better than I even could have hoped, how would I hope, uh, how would I want to live today? Yeah. Like if I just had that assurance, things are going to be fine. It's my favorite question. How would I live today? Yeah. And that changed everything for me. I realized I'd been putting my life on hold. I had been waiting for my life to begin really. And I've been missing it in the process. Yeah. Our years of being single, whether they are whether it's two years or 20 years or yeah. four, however long it is. Yeah. Those are precious years of our lives. Or they're not wasted. They're not wasted, but yeah. I feel like I was wasting mine. Yeah. Um, I was wasting really precious, really pivotal years of my twenties waiting for my person to show up and feeling like I couldn't really begin my life until he did. Yeah. I um, mean, I have a very similar story. I was in New York and my mentor, I remember was talking to her. I just kind of started to become a believer and I was like, over many a tear stained salad was crying to her about being single. And I was like, I have this career and it's great, but like, I just want a man. Da, 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 da. And like, I'm waiting to do this. I'm waiting to do that. And she just turned to me very, very matter of factly. She got married much later in life. Um, I think she was like close to 50, I think when she mm-hmm. got married and she said, Jenna, just buy the dishes. And so what she meant by that was just start your life. Like buy the dishes. Don't wait for your wedding registry, buy the dishes. So I bought a couch. I love it. <laughs> So I bought a couch much. and that couch was a terrible couch, but, oh, that's so but, funny. but I, but I listened to that. Cause you're so right. I think so many of us wait for our life to start or say like, we won't do the career we want to do, or we won't do the thing. Your, yours was like travel, right? Wasn't yeah. that your thing? All of us, I think have our thing that we want to, we are holding off on doing until we find the person. Yes. And that was actually one thing right in that season. I got this opportunity mm-hmm. to 
to travel around the world mm-hmm. for a year um, mm-hmm. as doing humanitarian work and writing. Yeah. And I really, I all of me wanted to go, mm-hmm. but part of me was really scared to go because I felt like I thought I was going to meet my person in Denver, Colorado, where I'd always lived. Yeah. And leaving for a year during my like prime husband finding year <laughs> seems like a terrible plan. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, that's kind of where I was when I had this revelation. And, yeah. and I realized if I knew that everything was going to turn out well, that everything was going to be okay, sure. I would go on the trip. Yes, you would. And so I did. And really like that started this whole, um, new way of looking at my life where I really started to invest in my friendships yeah. and really formed some incredible life-changing friendships yeah. that I have to this day. Yeah. I really focused on my own healing and growth. I was dealing with a lot of insecurity at that time. Sure. And I really like worked on it because, yeah. because I could see that insecurity mm-hmm. bleeding into all parts of my life. That those years were major career years for yeah, me. Such good career it years. Was such good career yeah. years. And, and I mean, like, I feel like God revealed really what he had for me. And I started Mm -hmm. taking steps into it during that time. It just was a pivotal time for me. And and honestly, one of my favorite seasons of my whole life, I had so much fun. I grew so much. And it's funny because it was because of those things Mm. that I actually was in the right place at the right time Mm -hmm. as the best version of myself to meet my husband. It's because I did those things that I met him. And, And I think that, you know, as I'm not only that, I can see so much of the things that I did when I was single in that, like once I had that revelation yeah. and started investing in myself, I can still see the fruit of that in our marriage. And we've been oh, married for five years. That's so cool. It is truly people ask yeah. me how, because you know, once you get married, everyone thinks you have marriage advice or you think you have marriage <laughs> advice, something like that. Um, but people ask me like, how did you prepare for marriage? And I'm like, I loved my single life. Mm. I lived my single life to the full. That is how, that yeah. is what set us up for a great marriage. Cause so it just balance looks different then. The, the stages, you have a different person in the way that you also just like spend your time looks yeah. so different. Yeah. It looks so different. And like the, I think, so I get a lot of, and we kind of talked about this beforehand. I, I often will get a lot of women that are single in, in you know, mid thirties or something like that. Very career driven, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm always like, also make sure you're working on yourself. Also make sure you're investing in friendships. Also make sure you're doing these other things. Cause yes, this is the time for your career. It's also the time to work on yourself until you meet your person. Yeah. So it's both and. Because, you know, we were talking about this too. All of a sudden, you have no idea how long your single life is mm-hmm. going to last. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, someone pops into your life uh, and yeah. it's <laughs> crazy how fast it happens. And yeah. you don't get this, like, that's not when the training ground starts. That's not when you yeah. go to boot camp. Yep. Um, you, you, all of a sudden you are in a relationship as the same. It, it's kind of like if you, I just had a birthday. So yeah. a couple of days ago, I was 30 yeah. and then I woke up the next day and now I'm 31. I didn't change in that time. Like yes. I'm still the same 30 yes. year old version so of myself good. now that so I'm 31. Good. And it's the same thing when you get into a relationship, all of a sudden it just happens yeah. and you don't have to have a chance to become your best self. All of a sudden you are who you've been. Yes. And so I think that the better, the more we can invest in ourselves and invest in our lives, the better we will better off we will be in this next relationship. Yeah. Um, but also it makes such a difference in our single lives and in our work and in the better, the more we can invest in ourselves, it just pays off in every single corner of our life. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, I, I saw so much fruit in my own life from it that the second I stopped waiting and started yeah. really living and loving my life, yeah, I became such a better version of myself. My life was so much more fun. It was so much more fulfilling. Yeah. I got to see so much fruit in my work and in my relationship with God and in my friendships. Yes that gave me such confidence. Sure. And really it was that confidence that attracted your husband. Attracted my husband. Yes. yes. It totally <laughs> caught his eye. And so, I mean, it's the reason I was in the right place. It's yeah. the reason I caught his eye and it has set us up yeah. so well for marriage. And so yeah. that's why I had to create that course because it was so game changing for me yeah. that I just knew I couldn't keep it to myself. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it was super impactful for me and I think it helped me change my mindset around how I dated even to like the dating aspect of things. So like, let's say you just mentioned like when you do get in a relationship, right? Um, like you say, you start dating somebody, you like have entered out of singleness. You're now into dating, right? The next stage kind of like, right. how do you manage? And I can kind of personally attest to this. So like I had been single for a really long time and I met an awesome man and it's wonderful. It's so lovely. And also it's a time, like that sounds bad to say it's a time commitment, but it's, <laughs> it's like, I'm so used to be being me, myself and I, and my friends, obviously, and like doing church related things, volunteering, all those different things. And I was in charge of my life. I had all my things going. 
<laughs> right? And this wonderful man steps in and I'm like, but I actually want to spend a lot of time with him. And so it has been a challenge for me to figure out how to balance my time really well. And so I, one, I'm looking back on single times and being like, well, wow, I really should have enjoyed that more, which I feel like hindsight's always 20, 20, right? right? I should have enjoyed that. I should have enjoyed like, and really respected that time and honored that time and not been crying through the whole thing. <laughs> Um, and just knew that God had a plan regardless. Right. And so now I entered into dating. It's like, how, how do you think people can manage having, being awesome in your career? And then also at the same time, devoting time to this other person and like investing time there. I think that there's a bit of a swing. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's a pendulum. You're on one side, you swing pretty hard to the other side. And yeah. then I think you find a middle ground. Yeah. And I think we don't give ourselves enough grace for yes. that swing. When you just meet someone and when you start dating them and those yeah. first couple months, especially, oh, yeah. totally. like, you don't sleep very much. No. Like, I feel like you're, <laughs> so true. It, I mean, it takes over your life. Yes. It takes over your heart. And that's such a fun thing. Yes. And I, so I think that the idea is if we've yeah. been investing in all parts of our lives, this is the same as the work-life balance thing. Sure. If you've been working really hard at work, if you've been investing there, then it shouldn't fall apart if you leave for a week. Yeah. I think that our lives, if we've been really investing in our single lives and we've been investing in our other relationships and in our work and in ourselves, we can take, we can lose balance a little bit for a little while and and everything isn't going to fall apart. So I think like, especially at first, giving yourself the grace to be up late and to have your morning routine totally screwed up because you were on the phone late at night and like you're going through my life right now. Yes. You're like, your morning routine is off. You are like not working out as much as you were. I mean, it's just every single part of it is just a little off kilter, but it's wonderful. And this is such an important part of all of our love stories. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's such an important, beautiful, wonderful Mm -hmm. beginning that we get to savor. And so I think at first, especially if you've been investing along the way, you can then be a little irresponsible for a while yeah. and it really is okay. Yeah. Um, and that's actually some of the the benefit that you get from that investment. Sure. You make that investment yeah. and then you get to make a withdrawal and the yes. withdrawal is getting to just fall in love for a couple months. Yeah. There will be a time when it's not that you, it's, I don't believe in honeymoon or in what is it? Honeymoon season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, tell I, me about that. Why? Cause you hear a lot of people say that. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's ridiculous. I think okay. it's, I think it's, said, why would we believe, why would we ascribe to the belief that our relationships are only going to get worse? The longer they go <laughs> so <along>. true. <laughs> right? Like I just, don't. oh, that narrative is such an, I, I've heard that so many times in a lot of Christian circles too. And it makes me so mad. It's it makes crazy. me so bad. <laughs> it's so, so my husband and I always say, um, that we say, I love you more today than I ever have before. Yeah. And that's always our prayer is like, I want to love you more tomorrow than I ever have before. That, yeah. that our love is increasing. Yeah. And really, I think that like my giddiness over him yeah. is increasing. And also, I mean, even in the beginning, there were days when yeah. I was cranky or like, sure. you know, not in a great mood or something. So I wasn't like over the moon excited to see him. I have those same times now, yeah. but also I, there were days when I just would get butterflies when I'd see his phone or his yeah. name pop up on my phone. Yeah. I still feel that same way five years in. Yeah. Cause I think we just decided we're just going to keep falling more in love and we just don't yeah. believe that it's going to get worse from here. That's yeah. We just don't, we just don't, why would you that. bother? Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> seriously. Like get up at the beginning. So, but the thing that I will say is that just like anything else, you know, you yeah. start a new job, you have this whole new set of responsibilities mm-hmm. and you have to figure out how to manage it. It's mm-hmm. just, you are given a whole new mm-hmm. set of things to carry in yeah. and try to figure out how they all fit together. A relationship, a new relationship is the same way. Yeah. Adding something new is always going to knock you off balance a little bit. Yeah. But then you'll figure out how to manage it. Yeah. So it's not that you won't be as giddy and in love in yeah. three months. It's just that you'll have adapted Mm -hmm. to this new thing being in your life and you'll be able to say, okay, I need this much work time, this much time by myself, this much time with friends, this much time with you. Yeah. Maybe everything gets cut cut down a little bit, Yeah, but you're able to kind of figure out where everything fits. Yeah, totally. And it's actually funny you say that because I tell every client, give yourself three months in a new job, three months. That's that. If you're still feeling like you don't know what the heck's going on after three months, that's a problem. <laughs> like yes. you might not be in a good fit job. Like if you're really feeling like, Oh my goodness, what did I get myself into yeah. after three months? It might be like, mm, we might need a little bit more help, a little bit more training, or it might not be a good fit. Yep. And so that's actually, I mean, it's kind of like exactly what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's awesome. And I think that gives some freedom too, to allow, I know for myself, even like 
thinking, oh my gosh, am I not, am I not doing all these other things over here? My career has been so important to me, but at the same time, it's like, this is such a beautiful thing that I want to invest the time in where I found it to be really challenging when I was doing the online dating actually. And you're like trying to like, how do I manage my career? But also like going out on these dates with God, it just felt like a lot of time. And I've heard that from a lot of people that I've talked to were like, it's just such a huge time investment. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I'm kind of just throwing that at you. (laughs) Hey friends, just wanted to pop in here, say hello and tell you about a super special free resource just for YOU. Have you been staring at your LinkedIn profile, not knowing how the heck to write your LinkedIn summary? Should it be long or short? Do you use first person or what? Maybe you're like many people and have never even heard of a LinkedIn summary. So whether you've been struggling to write one or you're just discovering you actually need one, I have the perfect freebie to kick your LinkedIn profile into high gear. Head on over to genevaviano.com forward slash resources to snag your free copy of my ultimate LinkedIn summary template guide. I've got examples and a step-by-step process to make writing your summary as seamless and painless as possible. So go on over to genevaviano.com slash resources to grab your copy of my ultimate guide to writing your LinkedIn summary. That's genevaviano.com slash resources. All right, back to the episode. Manage my career, but also like going out on these dates with God, it just felt like a lot of time. And I've heard that from a lot of people that I've talked to were like, it's just such a huge time investment. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I'm kind of just throwing that at you. (laughs) I mean, I think it's, it's, I think it's worth the time investment I mean, to a point. I think that, you know, something like online dating, especially being on apps and stuff can get kind of addictive, just like Instagram can. Yeah, totally. Um, so I think that having some limits on it where it's like, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be on this all day at work. I'm going to, or I'm going to set aside an hour where Mm -hmm. I can just watch TV and like be on this event. Or, you know, there are three days, three nights a week when I'm willing to go on dates. The other nights I know I need to be home. Yeah. And being honest about those with yourself and just being firm about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like creating some space for it. But I do think, you know, something that I hear a lot is people saying, I don't have time to invest in myself or I don't have time to take a course like this, or I don't have time to date. And I'm like, okay, that's okay. In some seasons they're like, we that, swing. that might be true. Yes. That might be true. Yeah. But overall, yeah. if you want to ever be in a relationship or be married, you're going to have to put some time into it up <laughs> so front. True. Um, and when you're talking about the three months thing, I think, you know, I haven't, I haven't walked down this road, but we know that, that when you have a baby, yeah. like usually yeah. you take three months or so when yeah. they leave. There's and something to this three months thing. There's something to this three months <laughs> thing. We just so discovered we something. Did. So like you have this three months maternity leave where your entire world is turned upside down. Totally. No idea what you're doing. And yes. maybe about three months in, it's not that you like have it you know, together, but um, you've got like, a system down now. You have like a little more of a system. Yeah. You don't feel quite as crazy. And and then you start to step into the next phase of life sure. where you're figuring out how to do the things you were doing before mm-hmm. now with the baby. Yes. And I think that that's the same with a relationship. And you do like... We all know incredible women with incredible careers, with incredible kids. Like yeah. there, you may need a little more help. Yes. It may be a little more frantic. You may, um, might not have as clean of a house. Might not have as clean of a house. <laughs> Something needs to fall by the wayside, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. Um, but you're going to like, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's- I love that. I think that's such great advice. That's such great advice. So like, so let's talk a little bit about boundaries. I know that when you're thinking about when you're dating or you're in marriage, you have to kind of create boundaries between work and like home life. So like, do you have any suggestions on how people can do that well and do that lovingly as also? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm so glad you asked this because my husband and I have a, I think unique story and mm-hmm. a unique way of handling this. Yeah. So, and I think we're actually going to talk about this in a minute, but we met because we were working together. Yeah. Um, and so we worked together for the first several, I mean, several years of our relationship, probably yeah. four, really three. Yeah. I like think it was all, that much. All through dating, all through being engaged. Um, and the first, at least, at least year of our marriage. Dang. Um, and so we, we have like some, a different dynamic because of that. Also, we're both business owners. We yeah. both work for ourselves. Sure. So that's a little different. Yeah. Um, and we've handled it in a different way because of that. Yeah. There is this rule that I always point at this one because, mm-hmm. but there are lots like it. People always say you should go to bed at the same time mm. when you're married. Mm-hmm. Like you should go to bed at the yeah. same time. My husband, Carl and I have never done that ever. Really? So the way that our schedule works, and I feel like I want to share it just so that it'll give you kind of an idea yeah. of like the fact that this can look like whatever you need it to look like. Yeah. You just need everybody, to figure out. Everybody's individual. Everyone's different. Yeah. So, um, I wake up at probably 
7, 7.30 mm-hmm. in the morning and kind of start my day. Carl is not a morning person, mm-hmm. but he's recently trained himself to get up at about 8.30 and then yeah. he heads to work. So now he works at a co-working space. I work from home, so yeah. we're not together during the day. Yeah, He comes home probably, so I work all day. He works all day. Um, he probably comes home anywhere between probably 6 and 7.30, just yeah. depending on the night, depending on what's going on. And I tell him that 30 minutes before, or like a few minutes before he's about to leave the office. Mm-hmm. So it'll give me about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. He needs to tell me so that I can start shutting down. Yeah. Otherwise he comes home and I'm glued to my laptop. Yeah. And like, don't bother me. Yeah, yes, don't talk to me. Yeah. And I'm not ready to be in wife mode. <laughs> so he has his drive home to kind of decompress. And so yeah. he has to tell me I'm on my way so that I can shut things down and just like transfer my brain over. That's so smart. It's so helpful. Yeah. One, another thing I do, which I don't know if, you know, anyone else works from home, but, and I need to get better at it because I've, I've let it slide recently, but having my laptop closed down, having like the cord wrapped up, having yeah. everything put away and then put yeah. away in my office with the door shut. Yes. So that it's not, so that I'm yep. not looking at mm-hmm. my work stuff spread mm-hmm. all over my house. And um, so that's really helped me too. But so then Carl and I will take the next, you know, two and a half, three hours mm-hmm. until I go to bed. I go to bed way earlier than him. Yeah. I go to bed at like maybe nine 30 or 10. Yeah. That's me. Or start like, <laughs> yeah, like start like winding down then. So that whole time is just for us. We'll make yeah. dinner. We'll hang yeah. out. We'll like, um, we're really into the great British baking show right now. Okay. Um, so <laughs> <Get> it, girl. <laughs> I mean, wildlife. Yeah. But so we'll like that whole time is just for us. Neither of us is working during that time. Yeah. Like really pretty much ever. Yeah. Unless there's a giant project going on. But usually that time's just for us. Um, and then I'll start winding down to go to bed and he'll actually hang out with me and just kind of lay with me or just yeah, like yeah. stay with me usually until I go to, until I fall asleep. Yeah. So he'll stay with me for like another half an hour or so. Yeah. But then he gets back up mm-hmm. and works until probably 2 a.m. Sometimes, Dang. sometimes later, if he has a giant project every once in a while, he pulls an all nighter cause he's crazy like that. Yeah. Um, I need so much more sleep. Yes. Than he does. I am the same way. So like, there's never. no way. <laughs> but so he does a lot of his best thinking and a lot of his best work yeah. at night yeah. when he's not in meetings, he's not sure. getting emails and no one else is awake or bothering yes. him. So that's, he's always been a night owl and that is his creative time. So yeah. we have this stretch of time in the evening where it's just us. Mm-hmm. And then I get to like, then I go to bed and it's, we get this like sweet time together mm-hmm. and then he gets up and then he gets to be yeah. an introvert and a creative and he gets yeah. to work on things he wants to work on. And so yeah. all of that to say it's different for everybody. Yes. And that is that. like, that's such a sweet, like, I feel like the, the advice of you should go to bed at the same time, or you should have a date night this one day a week or whatever yeah. the thing is. The point of that is to make sure that you're maintaining connection yes. with your person. Yeah. And, but it doesn't have to happen the way that other people do it, especially if your work schedule is different. Yeah. Like your life is different from other people's. Yeah. Maybe you work night shifts. Maybe you work totally. um, till 9 PM or so. I mean, your yeah. time is going to be different. So figuring out what that connection time looks like for you guys yeah, and what your body rhythms are like. Yeah. If you're, being so intentional. Yeah. Just yeah. paying attention to what you actually really need and mm-hmm. then making that time. And so when you're dating, it's like, Figuring it, like looking at your schedule, seeing how much time you need to get your work done. Um, yeah. You know, seeing how much time you can make for each other and setting that time aside intentionally. And I think that when we do things intentionally, we're able to have a lot more quality mm-hmm. instead of like, you're able to really have a great night together instead yeah. of just sort of casually hanging out and both being on your phone, half working a bunch. Yeah. You can get yeah. your work done on one side so true. and then really be together on the other side. Yeah. I have a friend where um, her husband says, no phones or laptop in the bedroom. The only things that are here is for sleeping and sex. Yes. <laughs> Those yes. are the only two things that are the only thing you're not allowed to have your laptop and you're not allowed to have your phone in the bedroom. It's so good. It's not allowed to be there. It's so good. And so it's kind of funny because he's very type A, but... <laughs> Because he would say that, but I think it's so healthy. It's I think it's so, so good. healthy. Like knowing those, knowing those boundaries, knowing yeah. what you need, and making space for them. The one yeah. other thing I would add is that sometimes my work's a little different because I work for really truly for myself. I don't have sure. clients, yeah, um, and so I get to dictate my schedule more than my husband does. Sure, he has clients. Yep, and that's so, kind of like me. I have clients. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. and so sometimes he'll have projects that he doesn't actually get to control as much as. Like, I like do. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so something that's been really helpful, I can find myself feeling resentful or angry mm. when, when he's really wrapped up in something or when something's taking longer yeah. or when he has to bring something on a trip or something sure. like that. The thing that has helped me so much is when he tells me what he's working on. Mm. I think that we think yeah. like, don't bring it into this. Like, yeah. you know, keep, keep them separate. But when he can tell me 
I'm working on this project. This is the client. This is what's happening. This yeah. is where, this is where we're kind of struggling. Yeah. Then I feel like I'm on his team yeah. and I'm in it too. Yes. And, and it's not work is taking him away from me. It's we're working on this deadline. We're going to make it. Yeah. Like, I just, I understand and I'm on his team in a different way when I know what he's working on. I love that. I think that's really, really healthy. Cause you're right. I think a lot of the advice is like, I want to separate the home from work, but at the end of the day, you're still mentally bringing it home, even if you're not verbalizing it. So the verbalization, actually makes it so that you are in a team together in yep. it. That totally makes sense. Yep. So like, let's say that you, so you guys work from home sometimes. So I'm sure he works from home sometimes as sometimes, well. Yeah. yeah. But like, let's say you actually work together. Talk to me about that. Cause I have some friends where they like are together in a business together or like they are working the same department, kind of similar. How do you guys work? How do you, how do you manage those boundaries whenever you're like, I'm literally with this person 24 seven. It's really hard. Um, <laughs> but, but I will say that while it's hard, it's also really great because yeah. you are able to connect on a different level. Yep. You are able to learn more about each other than yeah. really any other couple you would. You see them in environments that are you, different. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get to be, I remember like, I mean, you're forced to figure out communication sure. better than anybody else. Yeah. It's like extra boot camp for your relationship sure. um, to have that other dynamic there. Yeah. Um, I think that there were days that were really hard when Carl and I were working together, especially mm -hmm. when we were first dating, because we would have a, we would be going on a date that night, but then during the day, he was the creative director at this company we worked at and I was on the video team. And so I would like make a promotional video, show it to him for his like approval. And he would have to tell me all the things that were wrong with it. Oh, and gosh. then I'd have to leave work <laughs> and go on a date. And it just, it was really tricky yeah, on that is some super days. Tricky. But I think that, you know, while that will add an extra dimension of stress yeah. and frustration to your relationship, yeah. it also will add so much benefit to it because you will yeah. be better communicators than really anybody else. Yeah, that's so true. How did your company take that? They, I mean, they were really, um, pretty lax with, yeah. there weren't rules where you like couldn't date each other. Yeah. Cause some um, companies are like that, yes. which makes sense also, which also totally makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that we definitely probably had like caused uncomfortable moments for other people <laughs> every once in a while. Like if we would hey, be, it worked out, everyone was it mature. Totally did. I know. <laughs> like if we like, you know, we're, we're mad at each other or something. It's like, it was just a different, a different dynamic. We yeah. brought a different dynamic into the office, but we're still really, really great friends with all the people that we worked with at the time. And yeah. it's so cool that they know us both so well. <sighs> and so beautiful. It's really special. And so, and also like, I have such memories of sitting there. I feel like I love Carl more because I know how brilliant he is. Yeah. Um, he would be leading like a creative brainstorm or something and, and leading our team and walking us through something. And I remember just sitting there like being so impressed by him and so proud of him. And yeah, and, so into him, you know, yeah. like, I, I think you're amazing. And I know yeah. how amazing you are because I've seen you in action. Yeah. So I think like, I mean, I, I feel like this is advice that most people give, but I think that having time when you're just you, mm -hmm. um, trying when you're at work to, to keep in mind the fact that like him critiquing that video of mine was not personal. Yeah. It was, he was doing his job as I was doing my job. Yeah. He was making me better. Yeah. We were contributing to a team together. Yep. That was, that was us at work. Mm -hmm. Um, but having time where we weren't talking about work, having time mm -hmm. where we just got to be us mm -hmm. was really good. And I think now, because we've had enough practice, we can slide in, slide in and out of those rules pretty, pretty easily. Quickly, yeah. He, he does some work. I, I hire his company every once in a while to do things for me. And so I've been in professional meetings with him as, like even recently. And it's funny because we go in and I always want to impress him. I always oh, want to think I'm smart. So and so I go in and I like have my best ideas trying to show off. And but so it's fun. It's fun to get to kind of spar yeah, with each other a little and like so come fun. up with something great. And then at the end of the meeting, we like hug and kiss. We're like, I love you, kiss you. And <laughs> so it's gotten, it's gotten easier. And I think yeah. that that's, if you're communicating and you're having time where you, you have to compartmentalize a little bit more yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, but if you have time where you're just being you, and yeah. just in a relationship. Um, yeah. and you can know that that part of your relationship is good. It's easier to be in the work setting and I don't know, it just takes a lot of communication, but yeah. it, I, th I think with a, enough communication, um, it gets easier. Cool. Awesome. So I kind of have like, um, one last question. Do you have any practical tips that maybe we haven't talked about that couples can do to have a healthier work-life balance? So one thing I, I just want to say again is whatever 
is going to look different for everybody. Yeah. So when someone gives a tip or yeah. a, an example of how they do things, take it, but look at the heart of it and sure. then apply it to your life. Yes. It is going to look different if you work yes. a nine to five than if you own your own, co- own company or if you work a job that does not fit in nine to five. Yeah. It's going to look different for everybody. So look at you, mm-hmm. look at your relationship, look at your own needs and mm-hmm. rhythms and, and make something that fits fits you. Mm -hmm. The other thing is really communicating about what you're working on, making it a team sport. It's just so, this is a random example, but my husband's really, uh, really loves football. And thank God I love football because if I didn't, (laughs) I would like hate my life. Um, but so he really loves football and, and watches it a lot in the fall and is really actually pretty good at fantasy football. Like he wins sometimes, (laughs) which is kind of great, but I, I would get more frustrated with how much time he's like thinking about it or on his phone. Yeah. But he's really great at keeping me in the loop on what's happening. Mm. So he'll be like, okay, we're about to make a trade with so-and-so. Like, <laughs> do you think we should do this? Or do you think we should do this? And just including me a little bit makes yeah. it so that it's not something that happens outside of me. Yeah. It's something that like I'm invested in too. So he goes, we'll watch a game and he'll be like, okay, we're watching this person and this person. We need them to do this for us to yeah, be that's so friends. <laughs> so yeah, it just makes it so much more fun. And so I, I love getting to know what he's working on and I love yeah. telling him what I'm working on. So communicate with your person. They can. Yeah. The last thing is, and this is something that we're still kind of figuring out together is having some, having some rules for your phone, mm. which is exactly what you mentioned. Mm. I think we both can be pretty bad about this mm-hmm. in different times. A lot of both of our jobs happens on our cell phones. Yeah. And so it's really easy for us to, you know, be on our phone working on something, but then we get sucked into something else. And yes. then all of a sudden we're scrolling on Instagram yes. and we're both the rabbit at it. <laughs> yes. Seriously. We're both bad at it at different times. And I know for both of us, neither one of us feels like the other is really that present when they're scrolling yeah. on their phone. Yes. So that's something that we we are still figuring out how to communicate about it. Like, okay, tonight we're both putting our phones away. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I'll put my phone away, but then he'll bring his phone out. And then that seems like it kind of nullifies the whole thing or vice versa. So I think that that's kind of the next thing that we're sort of growing into is how do we communicate? This is a phones are fine time, or this is a, let's just put them away and be together kind of time. Yeah. Um, So I think having that conversation is just helpful. I love that. My boyfriend will literally take my phone out of my hand. He'll be like, excuse me, I'm talking to you. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Because he's much better with his phone. He can put it away. He doesn't even care about it. Right. I'm the other hand where I'm like scrolling. He's like, excuse me. (laughs) He's so kind about it, but it's like, (laughs) it's, like, yeah, we, it's, we are both bad about it in different moments. And I yeah. think I'm still learning, like, we're both still learning how to communicate with the other sure. about it and how to not be, I think like every once in a while, like Carl, I'll take my phone and yeah. I'm kind of mad about it's it or I'll, do, <laughs> yeah, or I'll do the same thing. And he's like, you could have done that nicer. So that's, yeah. I mean, it's just, phones are a new thing in yeah. our, in our lives. We're having to figure yeah. out how to, how to incorporate them, how to still yeah. be present in person. Sure. And so I think just having that conversation, cause there can be some tension and some yuckiness. Yeah. Like your phone has your work email on it usually yes. and yes. it's in your bed. So yes. like, how do you not bring your work email into yeah. your bed? Yeah. Just having the conversation about how to handle technology. Yes. I love it. So many little tidbits throughout this entire, entire conversation. So it's been helpful for me actually personally. Even. <laughs> so I love that. thank you so much for being here. Tell us how can people get connected to you? Um, yeah, just how can I get connected to you? Yeah, absolutely. So my website is stephaniemaywilson.com mm-hmm. and it's May like the month and everything is, is linked there. Um, okay. I have a shop with several books that I've written um, my online course you can find through there. Yeah. Um, if you're an Instagram person, I'm at S May Wilson on Instagram and I'd love to meet you and just yeah. encourage you in any way I can and cheer yeah. you on. And so. your podcast. And my podcast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Could we forget oh my about your gosh. podcast? <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Sorry. Let's add that. Can we um, just say also, I just have to celebrate her. She got a million downloads this year. Oh and like, gosh. it was the coolest thing to watch that happen. So you should be oh. very proud of the content that you produce. Y'all should listen to her podcast. It's amazing. She has some fabulous conversations on there. Thank you, friend. Oh man. <laughs> it has been such a gift to me. It's been so much fun. I've yeah. loved it so much. So my podcast is Girls Night with Stephanie Mae Wilson. Yeah. Um, and that link is, you can find it through Instagram. You can find it on my website, but yeah. It's, it's, I, we talk all about all kinds of different relationships yeah. and Jenna was one of my favorite episodes <laughs> because she talked to us all about how to get our dream job. And we, I, we got a message. Um, I think she messaged yeah. me and then messaged you. What did she got? Like a, 
twenty thousand dollar raise something or something crazy, crazy after yeah. listening to Jenna. I've actually interview. had a couple more. I should probably send your way that have people that have reached out and been like, I got a promotion because of that. I got a, you know, so it's, it's um unreal. that's that's a pretty fun thing for for me to be a part of. So thank you for that, that friends. We are gonna have all this information in the show notes for you, um, and on the blog on on my website. So we can't wait to see you for next week's episode. Thank you, Stephanie, for coming. Thank you for having me. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to Your Career Story Podcast. I would love, 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 love to get to meet you. And there are a couple of ways that we can connect in between episodes. First and foremost, you know I love my LinkedIn. Second is via Instagram. And third is over on my website. I actually have a special spot just for you full of fun, free resources. So all you have to do is go to www.genaviviano.com backslash resources. Super simple for a bunch of freebies that will help you boost your career. Hope to see you next week.